Hello, everyone. I'm Peter Anthony Fields, and welcome to the Playwrights Corner. Today, we have a very special guest. His name is Ryan Vincent. So let's start right away with Ryan. Ryan, how are you today? I'm doing pretty well. How about yourself, Peter? I'm doing great, thanks. Um, and in case you wonder why I'm laughing, uh, it's because uh, this is the fourth time, the fourth start that we've had to this interview. Uh, all, do, all my fault, but we'll, uh, we'll let that go there. Um, so Ryan, let's get the uh, audience uh, introduced to you if they don't know you already. Uh, what is your profession and or what is the profession that you are currently pursuing? So I am currently a graduate student at the College of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia. I am pursuing my master's degree in secondary education on the social studies track. So uh, the end goal is teaching history anywhere from middle school to high school. I'm currently doing student teaching at Berkeley Middle School, teaching uh, civics and US history. And on the side, I really enjoy doing some musical composition slash theater. You are a veteran of the stage. And uh, so when and how did you get started as an actor? And, uh, you know, tell us a little about your history in that area. Of course. Um, so we have a saying in my family that I was acting before I was born. Uh, the earliest production I remember doing was um, joining my parents' uh, show choir. At the time, it was called Cell Rec Singers. Um, now it is called Notoriety Singers. Um, I did one song um, in their production. This was years and years ago, but I really enjoyed my time doing that. Um, I My first full musical was the musical Maine, which I did with, I believe, the Hudson Players. Um, I only, I, I played the son of the main character who came on at the end for roughly three minutes mm -hmm. <laughs> at the end of the show. But I really enjoyed doing that and um, I never, really stopped doing theater uh, since then. Uh, I've worked all around the Cleveland area, both uh, local theater, professional theater around Playoff Square area. Uh, I've done theater, uh, musicals, TV, film, everything under the sun. I've uh, had a hand in at some point and I really enjoyed doing it all. I was actually um, the first uh, Dazzle nominee from my high school, which are the local theater awards in uh, the Northeast Ohio area. Um, Really, you were the first uh, Dazzle nominee from your school. On on a technicality that they announced um, best uh, male supporting actor first. Okay, wow. But I, no matter what, I was still in the first year that uh, my high school, Orange High School, uh, participated in the awards, which I feel very proud of. Yeah, definitely. Okay, continue. Uh, that's about it. I continued acting up until... Um, my freshman year of college because uh something happened some global pandemic or something i don't know yeah, but uh, don't talk about that probably for the best yeah. <laughs> um, but the theater around kind of shut down and it was at that point that i kind of transitioned to writing but we've got plenty of time to talk about that later okay great um and when did you first discover that you had a well let me start this way you have a passion for history and when did that first when did you first realize that i think my passion for history and passion for mythology and storytelling all sort of originate around a similar time um so i suppose i'll start with uh mythology so i've loved mythology especially greek mythology since i was around six or seven years old i saw um a musical that my cousin Danny was in, who was in uh, Silent Truth, um, which was about the story of Arachne. The musical was about Arachne, not a Silent Truth, uh, mm -hmm. for those watching. <laughs> um, but I was fascinated by the story. So the next day I found a book on Greek mythology, uh, read the entire thing, and just kind of fell in love with the topic. And um, as I reached middle school, I found out how closely linked mythology was with history. It was the stories that were being told throughout history. And it was that point that I started to fall in love with history as well. So throughout middle and high school, I was learning about the ancient world, the medieval world, the uh, emergence of the US. And every time I learned something new, I just loved history even more. Um, and yeah, I clearly loved it enough that I went to a school that 
is now mentioned in history books and I got my uh, undergraduate degrees in history and classics. So history and older history. Mm -hmm. And now I'm trying to teach it. Which is your favorite period in time? Uh, tell us about your passion for Greek mythology. So my favorite uh, historical period is um, definitely the Bronze Age uh, in the Mediterranean world. Don't get me wrong, I love all of history, um, especially American as I, uh, as my school kind of centers our education on that in history. But the ancient world holds a very special place in my heart. And the Bronze Age Mediterranean was when civilization kind of exploded in a way. Uh, it's roughly 2000 BC to uh, 1100 BC. And this was, it was during this time period that you saw the emergence we think of as Egyptian society. So uh, the pyramids had started to be constructed, but there were still a few more to come. Uh, literature was starting to uh, appear all throughout the ancient world and trade, especially cultural exchange, was such a major component of the time period. We see uh, most, we see a lot of uh, the storytelling tradition spread throughout the Mediterranean world. Um, the early versions of the Greeks, the Mycenaeans and Minoans were inhabiting the Mediterranean at this point. And a lot of the stories from Egypt made their way to Greece. And that's actually where we get the stories of some of the Greek gods, which is fascinating that these civilizations we think of in isolation were so uh, interconnected. And it was uh, one of these stories that was actually the topic of an honors thesis, which I completed in the spring. It's a long-winded answer, but I love the Bronze Age Mediterranean. Everything about it is just so fascinating to study. And given that it's so long ago, there is still a lot more we have yet to find. You mentioned that uh, storytelling was uh, a, a big part of this uh, era. Um, does that include theater? It absolutely does. Um, I took a course on um, ancient Egypt and Middle Egyptian texts. Uh, and at one point in this course, we actually read uh, something called uh, the Memphite Treatise, more commonly known as the uh, Shabako Stone, because that's what the thing is actually written on. And it is written like a play where each of the gods are have, like you have the heading with the god talking and then their text. So that's a very, very early example of theater. But then, of course, we start to see the emergence of theater and the storytelling tra tradition in ancient Greece at this time, because... Um, this is the time that either the Trojan War was happening or the stories of it were being composed. And those stories have lasted for a long, long time. Yeah, they sure have. Um, and that's that's a testament to the, uh, the quality of the writing, perhaps. Oh, I absolutely. I mean, we still see like um, what Hades Town is on Broadway right now. That story is roughly 3,000 to 3,500 years old. And Hey, you know, people are still willing to listen to it and enjoy it. Yeah, definitely. That's that's impressive. If only I could write something that would last for three thousand years. Oh, Peter, I'm I'm sure you already have all of your stories, uh, scripts, everything are fantastic. We just uh, have some time to go before we hit that three thousand year benchmark. Yeah, <laughs> right. And I'll be alive then. Of course. Yes. Um. Now you, uh, speaking of theater and history and Greek mythology, uh, you have recently combined your passion for Greek mythology and your with your passion for theater. Uh, why don't you tell us about this uh, very ambitious and uh, wonderful undertaking? Thank you very much. I will gladly do so. So I wrote a musical called Ragnarok, A Musical Mess. It is a comedic take on the end of the world in Norse mythology. Um, you know, as I said, growing up, I love theater. I love mythology. And uh, there was a time in high school when I decided, you know what, I want to write a musical because I had taken part of the performing aspect of it for so long. I wanted to see what went into creating it. Um, and I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do it on. Um, I wanted to do it on mythology. Um, preferably Greek mythology, since that was, that's kind of my specialty. But I realized that uh, Broadway and theater itself was very oversaturated with Greek myth. Um, but no one had taken a stab at Norse mythology yet. 
so I thought, hey, why not combine the two? Um, there are a lot of gods with similarities across the two pantheons. So it would be interesting to put them in a musical together. I had a lot of bad ideas for this musical. It very much did not come to fruition. The only thing I really liked from that original one is um, uh, an idea for a song where Bragi, the Norse god of music and poetry, and Apollo, the Greek god of music and poetry, uh, kind of butt heads over who's the better god of music and poetry. I also liked an idea I had for a rap battle between Hermes and Herma, the two messenger gods. And mm -hmm. um, since Lin-Manuel Miranda is now playing Hermes, I feel like I might have to pull that back up at some point. Um, <laughs> but uh, overall, I didn't like a lot of it, but I kind of like exploring. Nor I still wanted to explore Norse mythology and theater. So after a few different ideas didn't really come together, I realized that the perfect story was Ragnarok, the end of the world in Norse mythology. It was well recorded. The name itself is something that people, even if they don't know the full context, are familiar with. Mm -hmm. And um, taking inspiration from one of my favorite musicals, Pippin, the first musical I did twice, I decided to make it a show within a show type of story with Bragi, my favorite Norse god, the god of poetry and music, as the narrator taking us on this journey of Norse mythology. And given that it's such, you know, a uh, a dark topic with the end of the world and the end of the gods, I decided it should be a comedy. Naturally. <laughs> Which worked yeah. out remarkably well. The Nor I feel like the Norse myths lend very well into comedy. I mean, there are just some ridiculous aspects of Norse myth, which I love, but it is very funny to see brought to life, brought to the stage. Right. Uh, so I started um, writing the story. I had ideas for songs. Um, a lot of songs, uh, a lot of the original ideas I had for Ragnarok came from other ideas I had for other musicals where I didn't like how the story was coming together, but I still liked what I had written uh, musically, um, what I'd composed. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that given the mess nature of the musical mess, I could get the idea I liked of having Apollo in there being a, a pain and breaky side <laughs> back into the story. And that is where the rival, that is why Apollo for basically no reason just shows up in a musical about uh, <laughs> Norse gods. Uh, and then I had fun bringing other, there, I folded some other stories into Nor from Norse mythology that weren't necessarily tied to Ragnarok, but mm -hmm. still I found to be very interesting. Uh, the death of Baldur, the um, contest of fire. Um, and then I even threw the God of Broadway there because it was a mess already, mm -hmm. why not put, um, someone who, I should preface, the God of Broadway does not exist in either Norse or Greek mythology. Uh, obviously Broadway right. wasn't around when these stories were first being written, but right. I like the character a lot. So yeah. yeah. And so that is good. how I ended up with the musical mess, which I recently just uploaded the last song from. And I have heard all of the songs from your, uh, from your musical, including the last one, it's just, just up uploaded. And uh, I have to say it is, one of the best musicals that I have ever heard uh, personally. And um, and I'm not just saying that. Uh, it is uh, really a brilliant musical. And uh, I can see it on stage on Broadway whenever I listen to the music. And um, and I, I immediately feel like I'm listening to the work of someone who has done this for many, many years and is a professional and a uh, very, very much honored uh, uh, composer in the theater world. And that's what I hear when I hear Ragnarok, a musical mess. Thank uh, you very much, Peter. That means the absolute world coming from you because you as a scriptwriter were one of my earliest influences on my own script writing. You are so talented at it. And I truly do not think I've could have even begun writing if it had not been for your influence on me. So it really does mean so much to me hearing that from you. Thank you. I am honored for that. Um, you uh, tell us, uh, tell us why you are pursuing a career as an educator. I have always loved storytelling. Um, if it wasn't obvious from the stories of myth, the stories of history, I I love being able to share the collective human past with people. Uh, 
whether through the medium of the classroom or the stage. And uh, I, I had so many amazing teachers throughout uh, my experience in middle and high school. Uh, each one of them inspired me to continue um, to learn. And I really would love to be able to do that for future generations. I believe that learning about the past, especially during the formative years is a crucial experience. And yeah, I've had so much experience in the area of sharing these stories and I love to do it. So I realized that my passion was to teach and I am excited that I get to student teach this year and that I will hopefully be teaching history for many, many years to come. Tell us what is your favorite story? Uh, it can be a specific story uh, by title or it can be a kind of story like a genre. I think my favorite type of story would have to be the hero's journey, you know, uh, Joseph Campbell's idea of the hero with a thousand faces, because it's one story, but it's told in so many different ways across mythology and history that I can't help but love it every time it comes up. I think it speaks to something innately human wanting to experience this world to uh, understand what motivates the hero and to see them uh, conquer evil at the end. Um, one of my most favorite interpretations of the story is in Greek mythology with the story of Asclepius, the Greek god of medicine, because uh, not only is he going on this amazing journey to uh, save people, joining these famous quests of heroes with uh, the Argonauts and the Caledonian boar hunt, mm -hmm. but he's also going on a very moral mission to help humanity against the wishes of the gods. Uh, he's by far my favorite Greek god, which is why I snuck him into Ragnarok as well. Uh, if you listen to Apollo's song, Rise Like the Sun, you'll catch uh, one little reference to him. And in the show, he makes a couple of appearances more prominently at the end when having gotten through the Norse end of the world, people are in need of a doctor. And him being the god of doctors, I was like, hey, hey. this is the perfect spot for him to show up. That's, that's excellent. Uh, I love the way you bring these characters in there. It's kind of like, yeah, why not? You know, and uh, it's cool. You know what? It, if it's going to be a mess, I'm going to have fun with it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's 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 better than a mess. It's a uh, fine mess. Thank you very much. A decent show, if you will, to quote the title of the most recent song. Yes, a decent show. Much more than a just a decent show. The Norse god Bragi would be very pleased to hear that. <laughs> Okay, next question in the uh, favorites category. Uh, who is your favorite storyteller? That could be an author, a composer, uh, a director, even an actor. Uh, who is your favorite storyteller? If it's all right, I'm going to have to give you three because I love stories and history so much. I can only narrow it down so much. Okay. Uh, so starting with, uh, I suppose, the oldest first. Um, Homer, the per person who first wrote to, uh, sorry, who first composed uh, Greek myths, my classics professors would be up in arms if I said that he wrote it down because he was not writing very much, but he was mm -hmm. composing and uh, presenting an oral tradition, the story mm -hmm. of the Trojan War from, although a lot of the texts are lost to us, we still have the Iliad and Odyssey. Mm -hmm. And I think it speaks to how incredible the story was that it has persevered all the way to the present, even only being written down four or 500 years after it was written. And then the fact that it lasted for another 2,500 says a lot about the quality of the story. And it inspired so much of the storytelling tr tradition around the world. Not to mention, I'm a big fan of the Iliad. Uh, <laughs> then next, I would say Neil Gaiman, um, the author. And I know he also writes comic books and TV and movies, but he has brought mythology into a, the modern world in a way that I hope I am able to through the uh, musicals. He weaves these stories that are ancient uh, through what it means to be human, through the lens of what it means to be human in the present. And I think he does a remarkable job and his uh, stories of Norse mythology uh, helped me when I was first uh, getting my idea to write Ragnarok a musical mess. Uh, and then 
last, I would have to say you, Peter Anthony Fields, um, all of your your scripts are in books are incredible. There's such raw emotion that uh, as a reader and as an actor, I can't help but love. Uh, you, I think I mentioned earlier, you are one of my influences as a script writer. And I think your stories will last for thousands, if not more years to come. And I am very grateful that I was able to be a part of them, be it acting them out or being a villain with a goatee on the back of a faraway place, which you have in the background, I have on the shirt. If you haven't read it yet, go read it. It is fantastic. Thank you so much, Ryan, for that. Um, it's it's an honor and I am humbled uh, and to be placed in such company as uh, you have just done for me. So thank you so much for that. Name one important lesson you've learned in life so far. I think one of the most important things I've learned in my life is to trust the journey, trust destiny, because you will always end up where you are meant to be. Um, there are a number of times in my life where I thought I would end up in a completely different place than I actually ended up. And it was uh, for the better that I let, um, that I trusted in myself to end up where I'm meant to be. I mean, Ragnarok, the early versions, uh, they're, they were actually a mess. And I am so glad that I was able to let go and trust that the end result would be what I was looking for. And I think the end result turned out pretty well for it. There were so many opportunities in my life that I never would have expected to come to me to be able to take part in. Um, and maybe that I never thought I would take part in, but only because I trusted where that I would end up where I was meant to end up. Was I able to accomplish everything in my life that I have? And I'm very grateful for those opportunities. And finally, uh, what advice would you give to young people of your generation or any generation who are interested in pursuing a career in theater or film? And what advice would you give for those going into the field of education? Uh, for the people who are looking to go into the world of theater, into the world of acting, um, I would say seek out the opportunities and be prepared for when those opportunities come. Uh, for the film we first the, the first film that I was able to be a uh, part of that you wrote and directed, uh, A Turning Point. Uh, we've talked about, I, you were very impressed. I, I don't mean to put words in your mouth. We, we, we talked about this before. You were very impressed with the fact that I had um, the entire side just memorized and ready to go in my audition. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it was definitely a good script. So there was no problem for me with that one. I really enjoyed uh, reading it and uh, memorizing it and bringing the character to life. But you got to be prepared. You got to find those opportunities when they come up and you need to be ready for those opportunities because that is how you're going to make the best impression and how you're going to be able to succeed and continue in the field of acting. Uh, for any future educators, the best advice I could give is to have fun with it. Um, you know, students are coming in there. If you are, as a teacher, are coming in uh, not excited about anything, just want to get through the lesson, what reason do the students have to be interested? You got to love what you're doing because that love will be visible to the students. I like to make sure that my classroom is a very fun place. So that way the students remember it fondly, remember what the stories, the history I'm sharing with them and are hopefully inspired to uh, make a difference in the lives of future generations, just as I was. Uh, that's excellent advice uh, to give. And um, I'm sure you will be the kind of teacher that uh, will inspire your students to to reach for the stars uh, in whatever field that they go into. So uh, they're, they're, they are, all the future kids out there are lucky to have you as their teacher. Thank you very much, Peter. Sure. Um, okay, well, I think that's uh, all we have time for today on the Playwrights Corner. Uh, I want to thank once again Ryan Vincent for coming uh, on board and uh, sharing his life with us and, uh, and all of the uh, all the forms that it has taken and will take. Um, so thank you, Ryan, very much. Thank you for having me. No problem. Um, and so that concludes our uh, 
uh, Playwrights Corner for this uh, round. Uh, thank you for joining us um, and uh, keep reaching as, high, as far and high as you can. Uh, don't give up. Uh, that's for Ryan and for all of you out there as well. So thank you very much once again. And I'm Peter Anthony Fields, and this has been the Playwrights Corner. Catch you next time. If you liked the video you just watched, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe. Thank you.